Headlines today's Jugal Purohit reports from Ground Zero on the encounter that could have been avoided, an encounter that claimed 16 lives. Here's a special report that deconstruct Tuesday's deadly Maoist ambush. At 9 a.m. on the 11th of March, a 45-member strong team comprising of men from the Tongpal police station under the Sukma district, it's the last one in this district, along with a component from the 80th Battalion of the Central Reserve Police Force stationed here, left this very premises to check up on some intelligence leads as well as perform an area domination exercise. They were to go on this very road and their destination was approximately 8 to 10 kilometers ahead on this very road. The joint team which left Tongpal travelled on foot for almost 5 kilometers till they reached this point. As of now it seems to be an ordinary road with fields on both sides but within no time that this party reached here, the Maoists converted this entire area into a killing zone. The first fire as we understand on the initial members of the party came from this side. Now it does not seem to be a terrain which has a lot of hilly features or a dominant position so as to speak but there are a lot of embankments that the Maoists had actually occupied and they used those embankments to take cover and fire upon these personnel from. As a natural reflex action, these personnel shifted onto this side and they tried taking the cover off the road, those features which are there below. below. But they soon realized that they were actually surrounded even on the other side by the Maoists. There are some embankments that you see out there in those areas. That's where the Maoists had taken shelter. They fired from them, uh, fr on them from those areas. They fired on them from the trees uh, in, in those areas, ensuring that there was absolute confusion out here. The troops did not just understand from where they were being fired upon. Uh, it, it took them a while before they realized that they were completely surrounded. What you're seeing behind me seems to be a disconnected scene vis-a-vis -vis the ambush site, which is not even half a kilometer from here. However, there was a plan is what we are given to understand. The Maoists, minutes before actually opening fire upon the combined CRPF and the state police party, actually blocked traffic out here, got these three, uh, three trucks to actually park in a manner uh, by which, as you're seeing, they've actually blocked the entire road. And after that, they, got, they asked the staff to get down and then set them ablaze. They managed to hold on to these people and some of the other passengers who were traveling through this route uh, out here for almost three hours. People who we spoke to who were a part of that, uh, that group which was made hostage by the Maoists told us that they heard heavy gunfire in, in moments after they were asked to get down uh, from their trucks and the trucks were set, uh, set a place. Uh, what we also understand is that it, this was actually done to ensure that no reinforcements could come from the Buster side. वो बस भी वहां खड़ा कर देगा सब आदमी को उतरो बोला है सबका पास मोबाइल ले रहा है मोबाइल लेने का बाद सिम निकाल के सब सब आदमी का यहां बैठे बैठे दे रहा है तो उसी का बात में वो मिलिट्री का यान आ रहा है उसी का ये गोली मार रहा है Near the Tehekwada village, we are now at the site of the ambush and more than 24 hours have already passed however this place is still alive with action This what you're seeing is a part of the spectacle frame of the company commander, an inspector rank officer of the CRPF who was shot dead. There are caps which were worn by the CRPF men which are strewn all around and so are a lot of blood stains that we saw in the area. Not just that, at this point as we speak there are four live IEDs which have been buried by the Maoists in this area and an effort is on to call the bomb squad to detonate and defuse the same. Lastly, as you're seeing in my hands, the kind of ammunition that is being used by the Maoists. This one is the 12 bore Bharmar rifle, a country made gun which the Maoists have been known to use. These are, these are the shells of the Insas rifle, which is, uh, which is something which is manufactured by the Indian ordnance factories, but the Maoists have stolen them in large numbers. This shell belongs to an AK-47 and finally one more from the .303 rifle only goes to show that in such a small area so concentrated was the fight that the effects are still to be found all around.